Round one, we're going first. And we only have all of our colors and we have a nagging thoughts. So I think this is keepable. We've got the ingenious scob too. Not a terrible start by any means. Gotta avoid drawing a lot of lands, but I mean, you always gotta worry about what you're drawing afterwards. Can't pick up the perfect hand that'll only have seven cards that win you the game just on their own. That's not terribly likely. All right, so we grab the Woodland Patrol, throw away the land. Works out just the way we want it. Getting rid of a land is actually kind of perfect because it means that we're more likely to draw non-land sources. All right, let's get the Ingenious Scob down. Stop this Daring Sleuth from really getting through. I feel like Daring Sleuth went way down in value and the card was already pretty medium. It's very hard to actually sacrifice clues now, so it's probably just a 2-mana two 2-1 two in our opponent's deck. If they attack in, do we block? I can't... I don't think that we would. It just seems way too scary that they have something. It seems like they won't attack, though. Alright, yeah. Well, we're still drawing land, unfortunately. Let's get in there with the Scob, and I can play the Silent Observer. And they can't skulk the Fog Walker through. And Daring Sleuth can't attack through the Silent Observer, so it's a decent enough spot for us to be in. Ooh, Pyrehound is scary. That can cause us some issues for sure. Another land. Hmm. This is getting a little touch and go. Let's attack with the Scob. And let's use it twice. Play the Woodland Patrol and pass. Definitely need to stop drawing land. We're fine if we can get like a Griffin or something, a Wretched Griff, but this is a real problem. I mean, our opponent has four cards in hand and it seems very unlikely that they're all land. So we're kind of down four cards at this point. Like, we're, we're down anywhere from probably two to four cards. Somewhere, I imagine that we're down about three cards on our opponent, basically. So we need to, either them to draw a lot of lands and us to draw spells, or something else like that, because I mean, this is just not going well currently. It's going to be a real issue. If they attack with Pyrehound, do I try the double block with Silent Observer and Woodland Patrol? If they have another spell, then I get blown way out. But I really would like to get rid of the Pyrehound. And another land. Oof. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to win if we don't draw anything else right away. We're in desperate need of a non-land. Really, really desperate. Our opponent didn't even play land last turn. Oh, no, no, they did. Sorry. I am I apologize. I miscounted. I felt like they didn't for a second. Now they're not, though. So they have all gas in hand. Yeah. They're... So they're four cards up on us. And another land. Hmm. Well, Ingenious Scob can trade for Pyrehound, so I might be able to get in. I guess that makes sense. This is just really awkward. I can trade for or eat whatever else they do. No blocks. That is nice for me. And at least we're getting in damage with this ingenious scob. I might as well play the land. If I draw a wretched griff, I can play it. If I get close I'm getting close to just straight up playing Vexing Scuttler too. But, yeah, this is just super unfortunate. Seven turns in and having drawn one non-land is a problem. One, two, three, four, five. So I have 11 lands. So it means that there's only six left in the deck. We have less than a quarter of a chance of drawing another land every turn. 
So I'm hoping that we hit a lot of gas in a row now. Maybe our opponent will just run up against the wall of lands too. That seems to be our hope because if this keeps going this way and they're just going to keep playing spells, we're going to die in a couple turns. They don't realize it now. They're playing around us having prowess on this ingenious gob, which is the issue. Like, they think that there's something going on there. There really isn't, though. I'm going to block the Silent Observer on the Mercurial guys. I don't really want to block Pyrehound because I'm going to guess that it'll get eaten. Our opponent hasn't been attacking before this, so... I feel like it's pretty likely that they have something that will kill the Silent Observer. And it, if I'm blocking Mercurial Geists, maybe it still dies, but they probably have to put it there and then it's not trampling over for as much. I think that's just a little bit more useful. They have something like uh, Uncaged Fury would be really bad for me to block Pyrehound. Alright, Collective Defiance. Yep. And non-land. Ugh. <laughs> and it is a non-land, but I mean, the whole point of it is to get us land. Which is not what we want at all. I guess we're just playing the wild field and passing. We really just need to block with Ingenious Scob now. I don't think that getting in for four is really going to win us the game. We're not racing against this. Not with how many cards our opponent has in hand. Like, they're not playing lands, they have all gas, so... I think that we're just dead here. I Maybe that means that we should be attacking, just in case I draw, like, a drag under and I can steal the game. But, yeah. I feel like our opponent's gonna block now, too. They'll probably double block Daring Sleuth and Fogwalker, because I think they're starting to realize that we just have literally nothing. Let's see what they have now. Tormenting Voice getting another counter on Pyrehound and pumping the Mercurial Geist. Ugh. Wow, they discarded Reckless Scholar. That can not be a good sign for us. If that's what they think they need to discard, their hand is really strong. Uh, yeah, Pyrehound getting in. I feel like I just need to try and do this. Block with as much as I can. And try and eat the Pyre Hound. They're going to have a spell in hand. If it's not just straight removal for Ingenious Gob, then hopefully we can pump Ingenious Gob enough. Like, it's 8 damage. We can probably kill Pyre Hound. That's the hope anyways. We'll see what happens. Galvanic Bombardment, yeah. Well, this game's just done. They kill both of our creatures, we have nothing in hand. There's no way that we're winning at that point. Okay, well... Let's try to not draw, like, 6-7 lands in a row at the start of the game. I don't know that there's really too much else to change beyond that. Swift Spinner can block Mercurial Geists, but... Not even that effectively, it's a 1-3, and if it pumps, then it just kills the Swift Spinner for free. So there's not much point in putting that in. Yeah, I'm just going to send it back, and hope that we don't draw really, really poorly again. Let's try this. Uh, this is a very tough hand. We need to draw... I guess it's probably fine. We can play either of these off of one land. The big problem is not having an island. If we don't draw an island, then we might end up with these stranded in our hand and just totally stuck. Arlen Cord is almost a mall to six already because we don't have the forest in hand for it. Or forest, the mountain in hand for it. I think I'm going to risk it, though. Being able to play both of these is a pretty strong... I don't know. I, I feel like that's a strong opener enough that I should probably keep it. See how it turns out. I can't draw horrible every single time that I play, or act like I'm going to. I mean, if I mulligan every hand that's not totally perfect, then I'm just never going to play Magic. Like, we could have mulliganed the last one because I had five lands, but I can't always expect to draw seven lands in a row. Like, that's not going to happen 95% of the time, or at least it shouldn't. But, you know, tend to get caught sometimes, so... 
You just have to take those lumps when they happen, and I think you got to play to the outs that you do have, which is that you're generally not going to have that happen. The odds are in your favor that it's not the way that it works. Game trail right on time. Unfortunately, we now cannot reveal a land for it, so we can't play either of these on Turk Curve, but it does let us play Arlen Gord. It does let us play these. So that's really quite a good draw for us anyways. Like, I don't even know that it's the worst land for us to draw, just because it does get Arlen Court online, which is a pretty big advantage. Alright, let's play Byway Courier first. I'm worried about them having, like, a counter spell here, like a Convolute, because they're not playing anything, and that's scary to me. Ah, compelling Deterrence. Sure, that's fine. Now we can play the Byway Courier, then. And what does our opponent have? An Enlightened Maniac. Yeah, 3 2. No lands. That's okay. We'll just attack the Byway Courier. I'm willing to trade. Yep, that's very acceptable to me. I need to crack this clue at some point to probably just get lands. Play the Woodland Patrol. Desperately need a land here. Arlen Cord would have been good a couple turns ago. When does this flip? Oh, transform it when you do the wolf token. Okay. That's good, because I think the wolf token is probably what I want to do. Yep, they're going to emerge. Wretched Griff? Yep. Yikes. That is a problem. And a curious homunculus. Well, we got our land, but now it's too late because our limb cord kind of just dies to this wretched griff. I suppose I could put it onto the woodland patrol and just crack in, like put plus one, plus one onto, or do the plus one on this and give it plus two, plus two. Then it doesn't just die to wretched griff unless they have something else. Seems fine. I mean, I'm still stuck without any blue mana, so there's still a lot of stuff stranded in our hand. Alternately, I could crack the clue and then just play Field Creeper. <clears throat> but I don't have good flying blockers for a little while anyways, so the Wretched Griff probably isn't going to get... It's not going to get any better for the Arlen Cord, probably. I think I'm just going to jam it here. Start pressuring my opponent. Hope they don't have anything. If they want a double block, I would be very okay with that. And we'll see what happens here. I think the Island Court will probably die, but that seems like it's going to be the case almost no matter what I do. I can hold off on it for a really long time and try and find a better spot to play it, but... I mean, I don't have a lot of other great options because I just don't have islands. I do have 10 blue mana in the deck, so we're operating a little bit more than a third every single draw. We should be able to draw an island. Hopefully we'll get one soon. I still have one turn where I can field creeper and crack clue, so I still can use my mana. The big problem then is just I need something else after that. Yeah. Kill Arlen Cord. That is a very strong turn for our opponent. They. Oh! They didn't. Tra okay. Yeah, they, I guess they can just attack Arlen Cord that way then. That makes total sense. Did get the island. It's a little late. We can go Maniac, Sacrifice. Or, uh, sorry. We can go Ingenious Gob and Sacrifice. Kind of like that. Let's crack the clue first, though, just in case. Alright, just go Scob. Next turn, I can Maniac and Field Creeper if we draw land. Or maybe Tattered Haunter and Maniac. Vexing Scuttler doesn't get anything back right now, so it's just a 4-5. Which isn't the worst, but also not particularly great. This Wretched Griff is going to beat us down pretty hard for a while. 
Well, Enlightened Maniac and the Tattered Haunter does seem like a good line. And I think I get in with the Ingenious Gob. If the opponent wants to trade the Pyre Hound, I kind of feel willing to do that. Alright. That's acceptable to me. I'll play Woodland Patrol and Tattered Haunter instead. I just really don't want Pyrehound getting as big as it did last game. Because I have no good ways to deal with it. I don't have a lot of removal. I have a bounce spell, like I have Drag Under to play against it, but that's it. Oh, they have a second Pyrehound. Ah, that's why they were so willing to trade it off. And Shreds of Sanity. Oh, wow. That's insane. Opponent's deck is strong, and they're absolutely destroying us now. Not much of a chance here. Uh, we can Wretched Griff, sacrificing like Tattered Haunter. They just collect the Defiance, the Wretched Griff, and deal us three. And then do we just die? Four, yeah, we're just dead. Hmm. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess it's nine, so we're not dead, dead. But they can compelling deterrence this. No, we're dead. We're just straight dead. There's nothing we can do. All right. I mean, I can play the Wretched Griff, but it just doesn't do anything. I suppose instead of playing Wretched Griff, I could go like Maniac Field Creeper. That'll save me on the ground for a little while. And by a little while, I mean a turn currently. So I guess that's better. But it's not good. They'll compelling deterrence the Eldrazi Horror. And, can, and then defiance like Woodland Patrol and me in the face. Or not. Okay. Just Wretched Griff? That might be okay. I thinking Collected Defiance was for sure getting played here. It makes sense. I'm hoping that it does, because I need this Wretched Griff to actually stay. Yeah. Hmm. What are they waiting for? They have Compelling Deterrence and the Collected Defiance. So they're going to deter this at end of turn and then use Defiance? I could Scuttler, doesn't get us anything back, but it does block decently, like I can block Pyrehound a little bit better. Ugh. Like the problem with Wretched Griff is it just dies. They just shoot that and they shoot me in the face. I take six. Yeah, more than enough actually with Mercurial Geist unless I'm chumping the... Hmm. I think the Wretched Griff is still our best chance, though. See what we can draw here. Byway Courier. Oh, I mean, it is another creature on the ground, so it kind of stops Pyrehound a little bit. And then just pass. Oh, they have enough to kill us anyways. All I have to do is bounce the Tattered Haunter or Wretched Griff now and then shoot the other one with the Collective Defiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the line that I wasn't thinking of. So we're still dead, as long as they see it. Opponent's deck is very strong. Alright, they're going to wait for their turn to do it just so they get extra triggers off the Mercurial Geist and the Wretched Griff. Makes a lot of sense. Because they could have compelling deterrence at the end of turn. There's just no real reason to do it. So currently, if they don't bounce this, then I live. But that seems pretty unlikely. Yeah. Well, tough match. Uh, didn't have great draws. Certainly not game one. Game two was a little bit more reasonable, for sure. 
But stalling out early on without being able to play the Arlen quarter, our three drops made it a bit awkward, and we just kind of never recovered from that. Our opponent managed to get gain some tempo with the like defiance and compelling deterrence and just kept it up because we were just stumbling a little bit on our mana and they stayed ahead of us the whole time. So that was a really well-executed blue-red deck from our opponent for sure. I really like the blue-red tempo style more than just like all-in on spells. Uh, being able to just play like Pyrehound and Genius Gob and bounce and remove things out of the way of them is probably the best way to do it. And that's exactly what they did. So it was kind of perfect. They had a great deck. But we will do another one, and I will see you guys for the second round. Spell Queller. I could splash that. Spell Queller is strong. I don't want another It of the Horrid Swarm. Unsubstantiate is okay, but it's not on the level of Spell Queller.